with the turnovers, Ryan's had a, a couple fumbles here in the last two weeks. Uh, how critical to try and get those tightened up? The sacks or the turnovers, Teresa? Which one are we talking about? We went a little different direction. Okay. Um, yeah, we have to get open and we have to protect and we have to get rid of the football when it's not there. I mean, it's, you know, you get to go through all these and break them down. And, you know, sometimes we're, we're all included. When we run the football successfully, um, it, it's 11 guys operating. Um, and when we throw the football efficiently, it's 11 guys operating. And when we don't do those things, um, th there's a breakdown somewhere, and uh, so every sack is not going to be on the offensive line. Every sack's not going to be on the quarterback, and every sack's not going to be because we didn't get open. Um, we, we certainly have to make sure that uh, we protect our quarterback, we have to make sure that we, we get open in man coverage, that we run great routes in zone. Uh, and then when it's not there, we have to understand the journey's over and get rid of it and, and make sure that we're not you know, fumbling the football. Do you coach guys in that situation to play beyond the whistle and should John do pounce on that then? We, um, we, we try to coach a lot of things, Paul, and so um, we have to make sure that we do play to the recovery of the football and, and not the whistle. We have to disregard the whistle, everything that you've been taught um, from the time that you were, um, I guess, starting to play this game is that you, you play to the echo of the whistle and I can tell you that there's few instances where that's not always the case. Um, one would be any, any loose ball. Um, you saw that we did that at the end of the game, and therefore we're able to challenge. Because without clear recovery, uh, th those challenges become impossible. And so um, it is important for us to play to the recovery at a whistle or at worst uh, try to knock it out. If that ball had trickled out of bounds or it had been recovered by somebody out of bounds, you then get credit for the catch. But because there's not a – Well, no, I think what happens is if it's um, ruled incomplete, in, in order to make it a, a, a completed catch, there has to be clear recovery from someone. And, and I can go back to um, the, the playoff game, if you reference that in, in Chicago with the, with the Eagles. There was a play late in the game that I believe they called incomplete and the ball sat there. And when you looked at it on replay, it was indeed a catch uh, and a fumble, but the ball sat there uh, for what was five or six seconds and, and no one went and got the ball. So at that point in time, whoever would have re recovered that football uh, would have been able to, um, to challenge. But it's odd, yes, but they twice called it a catch. He called it a catch when he explained it, and Al called it a catch in our pool report. Yep. He said it was caught. It, it was caught. There was possession, I guess, is when they reviewed it. And I'm trying to do the best job that I can um, in, in understanding and in talking to the officials and talking to Al is that it was possession. When you look at what the definition of possession is, that the, the receiver or the player possesses the football, takes two steps, and at that point in time makes a football movement or a, a third step. So he clearly did all those things uh, by the definition, and then now it just gets a little tricky uh, on what the play on the what the ruling on the field was. Your team has won, I guess, several close games this season. How, how do you develop, I guess, the mindset or, or maybe the grit that you're going to find a way when things are close? I guess, and as part of it, just doing it a couple of times that builds confidence. Well, well I think uh, it's first of all is identifying players that aren't aren't front runners by nature. Um, to bring in here, I think those are the type of people that you, you know, have to identify, um, because some of those guys is going to be hard to change their mentality. Now, um, then it's my job or our job here to um, instill that in them, understanding that games are going to be close. They're they're going to be tightly contested, most division games. Um, that's just well, how this league is designed um, to be. It keeps people watching. You know, at the end of the year, there's bunch of teams that can make the playoffs. There's a lot of things that happen in this league that's supposed to be geared towards parity. And so that brings in the situations that happen every week. I think you have to be really good in situational uh, football and, um, and not have any panic involved in you and stay the course and, and be consistent um, and understanding that, that a few plays are going to make the difference in the football game. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think that you saw some good things and some things that we need to clean up and 
um, improve on. But, uh, you know, Ty finishing that play at the end of the game was, was a huge play. Um, it, was a, it was a physical play. You know, Ty, Ty did not turn down contact whatsoever. He went in there and looked for contact. He, he hammered the football out. And, uh, you know, being able, you know, us recovering that football, and Kamala, you could see almost uh, overreacting that he got it, uh, was, um, was what enabled us to challenge that call there. Said knee, but he was icing his foot. Can you clarify that for us? Uh, we'll talk about injuries probably not in this week until we make a determination on their status on Wednesday. How tough is that when you mentioned uh, Orr and, and Smith? How tough is it to go from zero snaps all season to playing you know, 50, 60 in a game like that? Um, I don't know. You'd have to ask Orr or Ty. I don't know. I didn't play in the game. I didn't play zero snaps to 50, but I think they're supposed to be ready to go. That's why we practice and we have these guys here and um, that, that's why we go back to the practice squad and so critical that these guys, you know, we try to give them a card, but, but we just try to also make them say, hey, here's what coverage you're playing. Here's the defense. Here's the technique. Uh, go play so that these guys can go against our receivers. The linemen can go against our linemen and that that's their way to, to improve. And we've had a, a number of those guys uh, do that, um, not only this year and last year. And um, Ty and, and, and Kareem are, are some of those guys. I think you, you see Khalif that, that was doing that, was running routes and, and getting open um, in practice and improving. Um, you know, I think that, that, that Kari Blazing game was doing that in Minnesota and trying to improve. I mean, there's only so many reps to go around. and so. You try to get ready for the game uh, in different ways. Can you expand a little bit on that, what the balance is like in getting a guy on the practice squad in a position to help the guys he's competing against, but also putting himself in a position to help if needed? Yeah, I think that their job here is not just to run a card. It's not just to be a, um, a body. It's, uh, it's that we think that you, if on Friday or Saturday, need to get called up, uh, you're responsible for the game plan at your position. And uh, you may or may not be activated, but it's your job to, to be ready to go uh, and prepare that, you know, on special teams responsibilities or in offense and defensive responsibilities that, that you're ready to go. And there's been a number of examples where, where that's happened. And guys can, can jump in there and, and be a backup and um, be up on game day. In the offense, are you guys beginning to better embrace the, the rushing game? Is that why it's being more successful? Um, I don't think that we've we've always tried to embrace different aspects of our offense. I mean, just because um, you know we've had a little bit more success, maybe we've we've blocked a little better, maybe we've run a little better, um, and, and we've um, been able to get to it by by a number of circumstances, the the nature of the game, um, how the game's going. Uh, you know, we have to take care of the football, and there's some things that we have to fix and and clean up, but. You know, I know those guys take a lot of pride in, in blocking, uh, working on the edge, receivers blocking, tight ends working in, in combination with tackles. and uh, so. Is there something to the success that you guys – because last year you had a lot of success late in the season running the ball. This year it looks like you're trending in that direction also. Um, again, everybody's just trying to improve. My goal is to try to make sure that we improve um, as the season goes along. Uh, in my history in this league, those are the teams that – that end up, uh, you know, being in a good spot at the end of the year is that you try to improve, and um, you know, hopefully we've been able to do that, and we can continue to do that. When you said yesterday that you feel like the field goal block has basically become a weapon for this team. All four of their blocks come in the last four games. Was there a point where you realize we need to let these guys go a little bit more, or what's allowed them to be so successful here lately? Um, you know, I think that, that Josh getting out there and, and, you know, coming back off of IR certainly helped his length and, um, you know, Jeffrey's ability to do some things and the guys, you know, again, we just try to make sure that everybody's going hard and, and not taking the playoff and, and competing. Um, and now I hope that, that we expect to, to block one every week. In your career as a player and as a coach, what, what's the difference in maybe not so good special teams and a special teams like the one that you have here? Um, you know, I think that every, every phase, I think, whether it's offense, defense, or, you know, players need to be uh, prepared. If you're comfortable that they, 
you know, know what to do and, and are given techniques to, to help them do their job, uh, they, they have to go out and perform. That's, you know, that, that's what it is. I never, when I never missed it, when I missed a tackle, I never looked over at the coach and was like, that's terrible coaching. Um, Cause I was taught the proper leverage or the technique or taught to stay on my feet or taught how to break the stiff arm down. So, you know, there were certainly instances in the game yesterday where I thought the players were prepared and that they, um, they executed. And I, I think that in this game, we, we knew, I think a huge turn of events was um, our ability to stop them when they went fast on third and one. And Kenny was very well prepared uh, by the staff, but Kenny also executed it and they tried to you know, pick him and go to the flat and man coverage on third and one. And, you know, he's standing right there and he, he really runs the route for the guy because he knew what was coming. And then on fourth and one, you know, they go for it and they're not able to, you know, they, they, they jump instead of us jumping. And then on fourth and one, we go fast and, and score a touchdown. So uh, we knew coming in that that was something that they had done on film and they had done a very good job of it, of converting those third and one and two and fourth and one plays where they're going fast and catching the defense off guard. So that's a, a long way to answer your question about the preparation uh, and then ultimately the, the player going out there or the unit going out there and, um, and executing it. You talked about uh, not having front runners in the locker room relative to success late in the games. Is that something that you saw that was maybe born a couple of months ago when it, in the two and four days? Is that, is that where that comes from, do you think? Well, I mean, I think it comes in handy. I mean, I just think that that's – I mean, I, I, I'd like to think that that's how um, – you know, I was raised. I think that that's the attitude that I want to have in our coaching staff and our organization and, and our players. Um, and you're, you're going to need to use it at times in the game. I mean, you know, first play of the game. You know, we overcame a lot of things yesterday, some turnovers, um, some field position. You know, it's, uh, it's a long game. It's a long season. You know, and then you know, just try to make sure that the players understand that, that because the first play didn't go our way doesn't mean that you know the rest of them won't. Ryan, you talked a little bit about uh, Adoree, but do you have some concerns about depth at corner now without Malcolm, without LaShawn, and, and now Adoree nursing injuries? Or where are you staying as far as confidence? Yeah. In you know, John and I chuckled this morning. There were 64 guys, you know, 62 other guys doing the same thing we were doing, um, going through the, the, um, the roster and seeing who um, – who, who might be available and who might not. So everybody deals with this stuff in December in the National Football League. And uh, you know we'll find out who's available and we'll get the guys that are uh, as prepared as we possibly can for the game. How much, obviously you can't melt Nelson. He's a premier, superior lineman. Um, walking away from the film after watching Simmons against him, how would you feel he uh, fared against him? Well, I think that Jeff um, played better yesterday and you know, whether he was matched up, whoever he was matched up on. And, um, you know, there's some things that he still needs to continue to work on and improve, but I thought he was, he was active. He tried to understand the game plan, um, and, and he factored a few times. I think that he um, was excited, you know, that we were able to win the football game, and he was, you know, able to have a large part of that and playing uh, in 41 snaps. Is there something that could be said to the strength that he plays with? Well, he's a naturally powerful athlete. I mean, that you know, God made him big and powerful. Um, we just have to, to continue to coach him and, and get him to, to, to play with great technique and, and great effort. Those tight window throws that Ryan makes, what, when you get those, what do they do in terms of, of, of sustaining the offense and adding to the operation when, when you can get a play when maybe there's barely a play there? I mean, it's you know, that, that's what this league is a lot of times. There's, there's tight windows and there's long – you know, they have long athletic linebackers. Um, and so sometimes in zone coverage, uh, those windows are tight. And, um, you know, we'll have to try to continue to con you know, find those windows and, and do the best job that we can to, to get guys in the right space. And then I think that uh, we got to catch it in traffic and, and we got to trust it. And that's one thing, you know – we've done is we've, we've been decisive for the most part. Uh, you know, Corey was um, really strong on that catch. It was a tight window, I think you're referencing, or AJ's. Um, 
So again, that we're just that's what you have to throw around, guys. You have to check, quarterbacks have to change their arm angle, uh, whether that's on screens or, or quick game passes or, or play passes. Tannehill seems certainly bothered no matter what kind of situation you guys get into. What kind of stands out about his poise when you're in these late game situations? Um, you know, I think he's prepared. I think he's you know he's comfortable running our offense. I think that him and Arthur have a, a very good relationship. I think that they. You know, whether we're operating on the football or, you know, it, it wasn't perfect. I mean, we, we, we took some, you know, some sacks there in the two-minute situation where we have to, you know, improve. Uh, but I think that the communication uh, is good between Arthur and, and Ryan and, and Ryan uh, and, and the offense. How would you evaluate the passing game helped the running attack the probably the last several weeks here? I, mean, I think they all, it all ties in, you know, just trying to be as balanced and, and gain as many yards as we can. Um, each and every week, what, what we feel like gives us uh, the best chance to, to, to win. How do you evaluate Khalif's preparedness and coming off the practice squad and contributing in multiple ways over the last month? That's uh, it's kind of who we want to be. You know, we've been cut three times or whatever, and you know, it doesn't matter where you, you know, where you went to college. It doesn't matter you know, how you got here. It only matters what you do when you're here. And uh, he's taking advantage of every opportunity. He comes in, he's prepared, he studies, he's got a great attitude, he's tough. Um, so we're, I'm happy for him for yesterday. He made a huge play for us. Did, did you get any positive feedback on the length of your challenge flag throw or the form at the end of it? <laughs> that was the uh, Steph Curry fadeaway. It was <laughs> very positive. What did Carter think? Is it gaining steam? Yeah, people yeah. say everyone should throw that one. Congratulations on that. Stretch and I have been working on that all summer. <laughs> Everybody knows the situation at this point. Nope. I'm sure everybody, uh, most everybody that was going to be in this room has won seven games in the National Football League. Um, it's not It's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, so that's going to be the message that seven games will won't get you won't get you anything. It'll it'll get you. Um, you know. So I think that's just going to be the message is that we just need to continue to do what we've been doing. Come in, prepare, get as healthy as we possibly can, um, and, and move on. You were in a somewhat similar situation last year where you're playing your best football in December. You needed to win basically every week to get to where you wanted to go. Is there anything you draw upon, good or bad, from that experience last year that you take to this month? Um, I mean, I would probably go back and try to look at some situations that came up. But you know, every year is a new year. Every, every week is a, a new challenge. Maybe two or three weeks, Taylor hasn't had any penalties. Is that better focus? Is that I'm not going to celebrate that our left tackle didn't have No, I know, but penalties. I'm just wondering if it's, if it's better focus situation there. Just I, to, you'd have to ask Taylor. I, I, I appreciate, um, you know, his performance. You know, we, he's pay, everybody's paid to do a job here, um, and, and he, he, he's embraced it. And, again, there were some really cool plays yesterday that, that he made. Um, you know, we had a tough holding call. We were first and 20. We got great effort from Taylor, from AJ, um, and running the, the screen, and, and Corey and, and Humph blocking. You know, you go from first and 20 to, to second and four. That's a, that's a big deal. And, um, you know, his effort on, on that play in particular um, was very good. I think he's been dialed in. He's been locked in. And, you know, just everybody has a job here, and, and we're all trying to do it. You back in the BC candidate? Uh, no. The only candidate I back at BC is Tyler Vrabel.